Hey, it's Dawn from Happy Home Garden with John and Dawn, and today we're going to tackle an upgrade for a Galaxy S9 Plus, and I think this will work for an S9 as well. This is an AT&T version phone. Now, there are a lucky few of us that have been stuck on Android 8 for the longest time, and this phone would not install the upgrade to Android 9. But I did figure out how to get it to Android 10, and in this video, I'm going to show you how. As a disclaimer, this method did work for me, but if for some reason you don't do it right or it doesn't work properly and you brick your phone, well, I warned you. Now, first thing you need to do is back up your phone because if you don't and you lose your data, don't blame me. If you don't know how to back up your phone, check the internet. There's plenty of videos on that. We're also a really small channel, so we really appreciate subscribers. If you like things like do-it-yourself and gardening and crafting and healthy cooking and eco-friendly stuff, then definitely check out our channel. So first up, I'm going to show you all the things that I tried that did not work. And if you're like me and you spend hours and hours and hours and days and days and days trying to figure it out, banging your head against the wall and finding out that nothing you're doing is working, then this video should definitely help you because it did work for me. So the first thing to do is to check the model number on your phone. In my case, I go to settings about phone and right next to where it says model number, it says SMG 965U. Now, if you have an S9, it'll say SMG 960U. So make sure that you have one of these two models. Now, under the software information is the Android version. In this case, the phone was on 8. Don't worry about the baseband version. In the end, it was irrelevant. So as you scroll down the screen, you'll see service provider information. Mine started with AT&T, then a bunch of other letters. The OYN was apparently important on some websites, but in the end, it really didn't matter. So here's the problem that the phone was having. Every time it would try and download the latest Android 9 update, here's the size of the file here, it would try to install it, and then during 27% of the installation process, I'd get the blue screen of death. And then it would give me the software update install interrupted screen. Ugh. So the first thing I tried was Samsung Smart Switch, but it kept saying your device software is up to date, so that was an epic fail. So next I tried a bunch of stuff on the Android recovery screen. You hold down the power, Bixby button, and volume up, you hold them down all simultaneously until you see the Samsung Galaxy screen. And then if you wait a little bit more, it boots to the recovery screen. So the first thing I tried on this screen was the wipe cache partition. It's supposed to trick the phone to think that it needs an update. Although that really wasn't the problem, which I only discovered later. I also tried the factory reset. I reset the phone, set up bare minimum on the phone. I tried it in regular mode and on safe mode. The installation tried to download and install and then I still got the blue screen of death. And that was mid-2019. Now that it's mid-2020 and Android 10 is out, I decided to go and do this again. I did a little bit more researching and finally found out about flashing the firmware. And no, this has nothing to do with being naked in a trench coat and flashing your phone. Ah! Anyway, I came across this website called Firmware Science. It has all this information about flashing your firmware and it has files that you can download. Now I couldn't find my current version listed in the drop-down list, so I used the build version that was listed in my phone. Now luckily it showed the version of the download that is the same version that's shown on an AT&T website as the Android 9 update. They had some wonderful instructions on how to sideload the firmware from an SD card, so I did try that, but that also was an epic fail. I also tried to apply the update from an ADB using a command prompt on a Windows screen, but that was also an epic fail as well. I decided to try to chat with somebody on AT&T. They said that they would trigger the update on my phone within two hours, but that never happened and that never worked either. I also found a couple free programs online that could automatically find the firmware for me. The first one I tried is SamFirm. That one couldn't find my firmware files, so I tried this other one, Freesia. I tried it doing automatic and manual, and that couldn't find the files for my phone either. I also watched another YouTube video, and they recommended using Updato to download firmware for my phone. However, it did not have the listing for the phone model that I have. I thought maybe if I had downloaded the files from Android 8 over the original installation files that it would fix any corrupted files, but that didn't work either. I also looked on the AT&T website, there's nothing there. I also looked on Samsung's website and they don't have anything either. So now that you've been patiently waiting four and a half minutes of me blabbering on about what didn't work, now I'm going to talk about what did work. So the first thing to know is what a CSC is. It's actually a three letter code for a wireless network provider. It's important to know this for the next section because I tried looking for AT&T versions of the file I was looking for, but I ended up using one of these two on the bottom. The first thing you'll need are firmware files. Go to this site called sammobile.com, click on the top where it says firmware, 
Then click Download Latest Firmware, enter your model number of your phone, make sure it's the proper model number, and then go to this drop down list where it says Unknown XAS. It's going to pull up a list of files that you can download. I would suggest choosing whatever is at the top of this list. In my case, 726 was at the top, but then when I took the screenshot the day after I did the upgrade, it showed an additional file. You do need a free account in order to download the file, so navigate the site, create your free account, and then come back to the screen and then click where it says Wait and Download. Also, while you're on this page, download Odin whatever version it says in the top right hand corner. If you want written instructions as to how to download and install Odin and use Odin to install your new firmware, please check out this site. I'll put a link in the description. After you've downloaded and unzipped the files from the firmware and the Odin files, click on the Odin executable. It's going to show you a screen that says you need to delete your Google account and your Samsung account from your phone before you proceed any further. If you don't know how to do that, please check the internet. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Next, you'll need to get the phone into the downloading mode. This is done by holding the power button, the Bixby button, the volume down button, all at the same time and wait until you get this warning screen that comes up. Press the volume up button to continue and that should bring you to the next screen which is the downloading screen. Now plug your data cord into the phone and into the computer and then on the Odin screen it'll show added and also the com area will show up in blue as well. Now keep in mind this might look a little different if you've downloaded a different version than I did. Now this version is installed on Windows 10 but they do have Mac and Linux available for download for Odin as well. Now open the folder where you unzipped all of the firmware files. Now there's two ways to add files into Odin. You can either drag and drop the file directly into the box next to the ones with the little letters here or you can click the box with the little letters and then it'll open up a screen where the folder is and then you can select the file from there. Now if you notice the file names all start with letters like the top says AP, next is BL, those all go into their corresponding boxes in Odin. And when you get to the CSC box, choose the file that says Home CSC. This is the one that I chose and it did not actually wipe the data from my phone. If you choose the regular CSC, that is supposed to wipe the data like a factory reset. As mentioned before, make sure to back up your data before you do this. Now when the files load into Odin, it's going to take a few seconds for each one. Some of them are longer than others, so just be patient. After all the files have been loaded, press the Start button. In the upper left hand corner, you should see it start working. And when everything is installed properly, it should say Pass. Now at this point, you can unplug your phone, and you'll see your phone reboot and start installing the new firmware. So just to let you know that Android 10 does have a bug in it, which I will let you know how to fix. But before I do, here's the old version that was on the phone, and here's the new version that's on the phone. Now one thing I don't know is if it's going to update automatically in the future. Now I did check for updates, but there weren't any. It's probably because the firmware update that we did says July 14th, and my other AT&T phone says July 2nd, so chances are there's no update yet. If it does in the future, I'll leave a note in the description. And now the fix for the wonderful little bug that they left us in Android 10. When I first saw this bug happening, I thought, oh crap, I broke the phone. But nope, actually, there's an easy fix for it. There's two apps with problems. One is Download Manager and Google Services Framework. Now while doing this fix, this screen is going to keep flashing at you. Just keep pressing Close App as many times as you need to in order to get this fix done. Under Settings, go to Apps, and then in the upper right hand corner, the three little dots. Click that. It says Show System Apps. Click that. And then scroll down to where it says Download Manager. Then click Storage. And then you'll see at the bottom it says Clear Cache and Clear Data. You want to click both of these. Then go back one page, and in the bottom left, it says Disable. Click Disable, click Disable App to confirm, and then wait a few seconds, and then press Turn On. And then repeat this for Google Services Framework, and then reboot your phone. So now you can celebrate by putting on a weird fish hat, doing a victory dance, doing some crazy dance moves, and then enjoy your phone. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please click the like button below. Also, please subscribe if you can. We do a lot of gardening videos and how-tos and do-it-yourself and crafting and healthy stuff. And we're a really small channel, so we super appreciate new subscriptions. Thank you so much. Bye!